my apologies for the last one. I just couldn't start right then. <laughs> so, <laughs> so a little bit of craziness was um was in the air. A bit of craziness. So uh, I have to restart, and this is that restart. So um. I was philosophizing with one of my friends just briefly, and um, he, he he told me that my um, grip on not using if and if and if it kind of it, it could potentially stunt stunt growth, and he, he he is right, he is right, he is right because people say well if 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 but often. It is what it is sometimes, but I use it in the context of if it's done, it's done. There's not much you can, much ifs you can put on it. But he is correct. If people don't ask if, what if we could build a bigger engine on this car, or what if we can design this, then things wouldn't progress. But you have to. He's right. You do have to ask the word if. It's only when you overdo it sometimes you can, you can really get stuck. You can get stuck. If, 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 if you can't get stuck. So I, I say that to say this. I was on Facebook and Ben Doughty, somebody who's known on the British boxing scene, if you follow the circuit, he made a few observations. And I, I was listening to it and, and I started expanding the observations in my head. He wrote on his blog, Tony Bellew versus David Hay was absolutely terrible. I don't think these were his words. He was quoting it from somebody. He said it was absolutely terrible. Because there weren't a lot of punches thrown like that. He said if that was in Madison Square Garden in the 50s, they would have been thrown out the ring and they probably wouldn't have got paid. I think it, it, hmm, it's interesting. He also mentioned the Blue Horizon, which I've mentioned as well in Philly. If you tried to fight like that in the Blue Horizon in the 80s or the 90s, if you wasn't throwing down, man, <laughs> Philly cats would have your guts for garters. And they say, they string you up, man. They string you up. Yeah? Let's face it. If you was fighting in the United Kingdom in the 40s or 50s or 60s in various locations in the United Kingdom and you wasn't throwing it down, what you have to realize is a lot of fighters in the United Kingdom back in the day, they weren't just relying on their purses. They was relying on putting on a really good scrap. And when the fight was finished, somebody would put a hat into the middle of the ring or a coat or whatever it was. And the fans would throw money into the ring, saying, bravo, great fight, yeah, excellent. And that money will be divvied up between two fighters. It's called nobbins. So certain environments and certain errors, certain incentives influenced, had a major influence on how the fighters fought. It did. Before you guys just start picking on fighters you don't like, this could refer to a a slew of different fighters. What if um, Floyd was fighting when Sugar Ray Robinson was fighting? Like, a points decision wouldn't always be a guarantee. What if he was fighting when it was newspaper decisions being rendered? He would have to modify his style somewhat, wouldn't he? 
you let the modifier start. Even Muhammad Ali would be subject to that. If he was fighting in the 30s or the 40s. Because people were, was, they just weren't going to tolerate it. They wouldn't tolerate that. So it was a very interesting question. It was quite interesting. There's a lot of fighters. I think um, Eris Landing, Lara, Klitschko. <sighs> They'd be in trouble, man. They'd be in trouble. They would be in trouble. They would be in trouble. Carlton Palmer is asking if Nas, Nassim Hammond never left Brendan Ingle. If he never left Brendan Ingle, why do you say that? Because EJ would say it was Nassim Hammond's hands that packed up. But it's a good if. Why, what do you think with that? Let me know what you think. I can't really answer that because obviously you have an idea in your head what would have happened if Nas, if Nas never left Brendan Ingle. Because he went to Emmanuel Stewart, man. He went to, it's not like he went to Dave Colwell. And Dave Colwell is all right. Dave Colwell is all right. You know, what's good, Max? He's got a good one. If if Meldrick Taylor got those extra 10 seconds, I don't think it was 10 seconds, was it? Well, it was about two seconds on the clock. What if he got the extra two seconds? What if? <laughs> yeah, he would have beat him. He would have beat him. He would have, well, I think, um, Chavez, he was closing the points deposit a little towards the late late rounds. But yeah, what if he did get them? I mean, I'm not saying um, his career would have ended any better, but you could theorize and say if he did, it, it could have been different. It could have been different. It could have been different. Like his, his career ended terribly, man. Like I saw them videos where his speech, the, the visible slur of his speech, and I think it was uh, one of the HBO leg legendary nights, and um, he's in his, his apartment, which, you know, the less said about it, you know, considering all the money he earned from boxing, looking on, 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 the, on the TV at the fight, and it, it, it kind of, it kind of I, I, I was disturbed that day. I, I genuinely mean that. Carl Palmer, he left because he essentially wanted to do what he wanted. Yeah, he did, he did, he did, he did. But um, there's a few arguments with Nats, though, that's the thing. Okay, some people say he should have stayed with Brendan Ingle and style and whatnot, and he would have been successful. But the other argument is is that Herrera was the first elite. Yeah, well, we had Kevin Kelly. We had Kevin Kelly. Mm, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. Hard to say. Dan the man, what if Buster Douglas was counted out in Tokyo? Lovely. Lovely. Yeah. Yeah, well. It's hard to say, Dan. If Douglas was counted out, it could have just stalled the inevitable. Because Tyson looked like he was on a road to self-destruction. It looked like he wanted to destruct. So maybe Douglas just would have temporarily stalled the train, or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Mike would have like, okay, I just got out of jail. He was beating my ass. And look, I managed to pull it out and he might have got himself together. Maybe, who knows? Who knows? If, if I like that, I, I like the question. I like I like the ones you guys coming up with. They, they they're good. They're very good. If Douglas was counted out, we would. You know what would have happened then? You know what would have happened? We would have seen one of the biggest fights in boxing history. 
Tyson Holyfield. That's right, BC. He just, he just wrote it. That's right. He just come up. Then we would have seen Tyson Holyfield earlier. Exactly. 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 And that would have been a different fight from the one that took place in the late 90s or mid to late 90s. It would have been a different fight. I believe it would have been a different fight. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, if. Because um, it was Octavio Moran was the referee, right? Octavio Moran. It's like um, Mike hitting with that left uppercut. It was definitely, a, was it a left or what, what hand was it, guys? I always forget the hand. What people. It was an uppercut. I think it was a left uppercut. Titan Douglas went down on his back. Went down on his back. And it was definitely over 10. He was definitely on the canvas for 10 seconds. He, he definitely it was definitely. But are we making a big deal of it? Too big a deal of it? You know, the referee mistimed it. And Buster did get up in the 10 seconds that the referee counted. The referee wasn't in sync with the timekeeper, but Buster did what he had to do. Can't really blame Buster. It was the referee. The re what was the referee going to do? Oh, I made a mistake. It was not like Buster made a mistake. He made a mistake. Good point. Good point. Who would have won out of Douglas, I mean, Tyson and Holyfield back then in 1990? Who would have won? BC says, Berto's speech is starting to change. Whoa. I heard another boxer, um, a British heavyweight. He was doing a Facebook Live blog or whatever they call it. And, he's, and he, he's retired now. He's in Los Angeles. He's got a hairdresser. Now, I'm not going to say too much, but his speech is starting to change a little. Mike, 104, what if Mayweather was more casual friendly? What do you mean by that exactly? Casual friendly. Mike 104, he says, hi, what's up, man? What's up, Carlton Palmer? If Amir Khan had a chin, Carlton Palmer. If Amir Khan had a chin. Yeah, the possibilities are, are, are vast. If he had a chin, man, if he had a chin, I think he would have probably, um, you would have probably have to say, All his losses, well, we don't know with the British Prescott because it ended in the first, so we can't tell who was the better boxer on the night. But the Danny Garcia, the Canelo Alvarez, you could definitely um, see him winning on points if he could hold, if he could have held a better shot, definitely. Yeah, BC, we would have seen Tyson Holyfield earlier, that's the right, Dan the man. Yes, 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 indeed. Snap. The bad guy. What if Eubank Sr. fought more American fighters? Well, when you say American fighters, you mean... Because he, he did fight American fighters. He fought Tommy Thornton. He, um, he, fought, he fought America. He just didn't fight the top level. Who was it? Who was it? He, um, oh, what's his name? Uh, Lindell Holmes. He fought Tommy Thornton. Lindell Holmes. He fought, I think, Ronnie Essett. He did fight American fighters. Defend against them. But... You're talk what you're talking about is the Joneses, the Tonys, and them guys, whatever. Uh, or maybe an Iran Barkley like Ben did. Mm. Well, it would have made his more career. It, 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 yes, it like um, because people like to talk about his chin and stuff like that. Well, maybe if he fought you, uh, Roy Jones in his prime, he might have got knocked out by a shot he didn't see coming. Because lots of guys with tough chins got knocked out by Roy Jones. Um, Tony Thornton being one of them. who defend, And he actually gave um, Eubank a good fight. And so did Lindell Holmes.
The punching postman gave Eubank a good fight, but was he got smashed to pieces by Roy Jones. If Eubank had fought a Mike McCallum, I mean, Eubanks was smart. Don't get me wrong, he was smart. Like he didn't engage um, Harold Graham in a fight. I think they sparred, and there's a rumor um, that Eubank might have floored him heavily. I don't know if it's true though. Carlton Palmer, if Ben never climbed back in the ring against the G-Man. Well, the referee did misjudge the count. Well, should Ben have been counted out? I can't recall. Should Ben have been counted out? That is the question. Um, yeah, it's a good question. It's a good question. I mean, it certainly didn't do the G-Man no favors. Didn't do him any favors. What do you guys think would have happened? Answer some of the, um, the conclusions to some of the ifs as well so I can read them out because it's hard for me to think, call up all of them up at the spot while I read them in the map. Dan the Man, yeah? Great one, Carlton. Yeah, it's good. Carlton Palmer, if AJ was American, well, hopefully he'd be signed with Al Heyman and we'd get a unification battle with him and him Wilder right now. <laughs> that would be beautiful. If AJ was American, could he bring the sport back? Probably. Could. There's a good chance he could. There's a good chance he could. The bad guy. What if Nassim fought Floyd? Well, he did kind of, Floyd did call him out, but Nassim didn't want it at the time. Um, I, I, it's hard to see Nassim beating Floyd, in all truth. If he got outboxed by Barrera, Floyd, and see, Nassim thought he was quick. He never fought, see, <laughs> he would have seen speed when he fought Floyd at that weight. He would have seen real speed. He would have seen, and, and, and Floyd used to knock people out at that weight there. St. Cruz, what happens if Ray Jones doesn't retire soon? <laughs> he answered it himself, slurred speech. <laughs> yeah. Dan the Man, that's one of my favorite fantasy matchups. That uh, that Nassim fought Floyd. Mm. BC. Don't know. When Ray gets knocked out, he gets knocked out cold. That's the brain trying to save itself, <laughs> laughing out loud. Next rider one. If Marquez got the decision against Pacquiao in their first fights. Ooh. Ooh. That's what I'm next. That's what I'm I mean, M M Marquez definitely won that fight. Let's make no mistake. He definitely won that fight. Who knows? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, well, we wouldn't. Have, we probably wouldn't have had the four fight series because he didn't just win it. He, he it, it was a robbery. It actually was a robbery, right? You take away that first first round, it's actually a robbery, in my opinion. Sixty eight dark rendezvous on boxing. If Mayweather had lost to Pac, would more white people finally like him? <laughs> yeah, you, you you know what it's like. You know what I mean, they like to see when um the when, when the when the when the when the villain like King Kong is brought down to earth and he's um been tamed to, uh, as a descriptive way as I can put it. They kind of oh poor animal, like they almost feel guilty for finally bringing him down to their level on the canvas, tied up. And innocuous. <laughs> Carl Palmer, Royce trying to die in the ring. Mike Tofor, not Mayweather himself. What if the fight between Floyd and Pacquiao lived up to the casual's dream? Say Floyd or Manny produced a KO. Oh, okay. If it was a better fight, basically. Okay, yeah, well, yeah, 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 yeah. If it, uh, well, if it was a better fight, we might have had a rematch. It would have... Um, Probably be better for that pay-per-view model, but in saying that, it's a good thing that 
it probably wasn't a pay-per-view uh, um, smash because I think in America you're paying way over the top for pay-per-view. You know, so, something needs to kill it off over there. BC, James Tony did like thousands of rounds of sparring and it takes it all. Yep. Mike told four, what if Ali wasn't banned in the three years? Yeah, between 60, was it 67 and 70? Wow, you would have got the Frazier fight earlier. You wouldn't have put on so much pounds so quickly. Yeah, they took his prime. Took his pr that, that was his prime they took. Yeah, good question. Good question. Good question. Good question. Ron Goodwin, Nas versus Pat would be a good fantasy matchup, in my opinion. Yeah, it'd be a good fight that would be. Carlton Palmer, if Floyd was white, oh my God. <laughs> Carlton Palmer, next rider, that's a great one, Mike. He also says if Floyd was white, he wouldn't be that good. <laughs> if Triple G was black, it'd be Deontay Wilder at middleweight. <laughs> it'd be... <laughs> excellent man excellent 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 it's like you know it, it's all it's like boxing it's all about timing man like just before i came on i watched some of the early rounds of david hay versus john ruiz and let me just tell you this now eddie Hearn or tony Bellew wouldn't have took that fight they wouldn't have took it they wouldn't have took the fight. Hay was about 15 stone. He was in the light, in the low poundage of 50. He was, he was on the lesser side of, he was closer to 14 than 16. Low 15s. And he was lightning fast. Like he came out and He's got a lot of because he, he he's a he's got a lot of testosterone. You can, he's been doing combat sports, martial arts, and boxing since he was a young kid. And you can see his, his parents had to get him into a sport. He's got a lot of natural energy, nervous energy, whatever you want to call it. And you can see he came out and like his twitch muscles are just like mad. And he landed his, uh, his first punch. He threw a little jab to the body. And then he landed this overhand right. One of the foot, and it was just so quick. Rui just didn't see the punch. Uh, that, that, this model of, um, if, if Tony Bellew had to fight that guy there, and his feet, you could see he was bouncing around and think, quick as anything, bro. Quick as anything. Quick as anything. You know? I, I don't think Tony Ballou's never had that kind of ability that David Hay had. He, he never ha has had it. It's timing. He, he, he timed it at the right time. Yeah. He knew David, David was living whatever life he was, put on weights. Because when you see, like, even when you listen, when I was looking at Hay when he fought Mark DeMore and he, he had his trunks up high, it's because he's got a big ego. Yeah. He's got a massive ego. He, he, you know, and like, he doesn't want people, even though he's not, compared to the average man, he's not fat. Compared to how he was, he knows he, he's carrying that extra bit of timber. So he has, he's got the trunks up really high. And he, he, he looked different. The, the see, they timed it all. They knew he had the operation on the shoulder and they worked out. He couldn't, because if you saw, he was just throwing in wild hooks, no straight shots. That jab to the body was gone. You know? That, see, what, what made him an exception is, is the speed, the foot speed. Like, I tell you what, right? I remember watching Hay versus Klitschko. I remember watching it. And I went from thinking Hay was going to win the fight, and then I said, I, I knew he couldn't win. By the time it got in the ring, I knew he couldn't win the fight. I thought he was going to get knocked out. And I'm watching the and you know what you know what really caught my eye is how fast his feet were, man. 
this the, the dude is quick on his feet, bro. For a heavyweight, he is quick, lightning quick. When you lose your gifts, you become an ordinary fighter. That's what happens. When you lose your gifts, you just become an ordinary guy. And you know, apparently he tried to go to Germany to sort out the Achilles tendon. He had a strain and it snapped in the ring. Whiplash, one of my subs, he showed me a video where it actually happened. And then you smelt it straight away that he was injured, you know? And that's, that's what it's all about. Everybody gets um, used. You get used when people judge what your capabilities are. They'll use you in a high capacity if you're really good at something or if you don't have as much um, qualifications for a certain position, you'll be used in a lower capacity in the factory. That's just life. That's life, you know? And Eddie Hearn, he said, yeah, this is viable. Let's go for this. Let's get him now. Let's get him now. And that's what they did. That's what they did, you know? His leg broke down on him, and you know, if if it was if it was back in the yeah, he would, I think he would have I think he would have took Belly out in four or five, probably. You know. All right, let's 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 get back. If Triple G was black, that was good. What would have happened to Tyson if Cuss, Rooney, and Jacob stayed? Ugh, what um, they couldn't have kept it together indefinitely don't they say donkey but you see you know the, it, it came to a stage where they were paying people out of settlement stuff of stuff that mike was doing but you know mike mike was um falling apart <laughs> you know what I mean? but according to steve luck mike would still be champion now if cuss rooney and jacobs <laughs> The bad guy. What if David Tua fought Mike Tyson? I think David Tua would be too slow for a prime Mike Tyson. I think he'd be too slow. He'd get knocked out. But then again, yeah, because he's it, short, but he doesn't have, like, Buster Mathis wasn't a tall heavyweight, but he made Mike whip by weaving under his shots and whatever. But that's not really Tua's game. It would be a bad fight for Tua because Mike was too fast. Mike was too quick. Next rider won. <laughs> yeah, beats loving that, no doubt. If he, if he was white, <laughs> he probably wouldn't be good enough. He definitely wouldn't be good enough. Mike, one on four, that was gas. Aaron Oniak, what if Ernie Shavers fought George Foreman? Well, I'll tell you this, we would have had one of the greatest heavyweight contests ever. Dan the man, Deontay Wilder at middleweight, laughing my ass off so true. <laughs> That's what they did. Listen, listen, that if 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 Triple G right was black, he wouldn't get all the um support he's getting now. There's no way he would. He wouldn't. I don't think he would. BC, by the way, the UK has their real British fighters. I think that that's contributing to the rise of boxing. The US has none of that. Yeah? Well, I think uh, America is trying to make a comeback now, though. You know? Dan the man, true BC, plus the British media shows more support for their black fighters and ethnic fighters than American media seem to do. Yeah. Yeah. Carl Palmer, if Dillian had fought AJ in a street fight. Ugh, no, man, ugh. If Dillian fought AJ in a street fight. Damn, man. Well, if you're talking about a street fight, and from what I know, as they say, what happens on the road, well, weapons would have came into it. So, I don't know. Who, who, who's a more gangster? Who can get who can get the the skin the quickest? <laughs> Delboy ninety four. The only thing Bellew had over Hay was he is a fighter at heart. 
It's all about timing, man. Mike 104, what if James Tony was more disciplined and in shape? Wow, if he if he was more disciplined and in shape. Wow. I mean, look at what he did being ill disciplined. If he was in oh boy, he I mean that, that guy is just 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 very talented guy. Very talented. Very talented fighter. Very talented. Colin Palmer, hey, is a fighter. Trust. Oh, he's a fighter. He is a fighter. Got, got ability, has ability, but injuries and age, and maybe not living the good life, maybe leaving Adam Booth, it's, it's just robbed him, you know? BC says, because there's white fighters in the mix, the US has almost none, my theory anyways. Yeah, that's, that's a good point, that's a good point, that is, that is a good point, that's a good point, you know? That's a good point. There's a myth. That what it is, there's the um, matchroom, matchroom boxing, not Box Nation to me, but matchroom, it kind of re represents London. It's got a very multicultural, they've got Carl Yafai, and, you know, how much Indian world champions have there been? You know, like Carl Yafai, Joshua, you know, they got O'Hara Davis and they have Frotch, um, Smith Brothers, and it, it's it's diverse. Lee Selby, Mix Race, Kell Brook. It kind of represents London. It kind of does. It, it, if you look at the the roster, it does kind of reflect what London is like. That multiculturalism. Frank Warren, even though he signed up a couple of black faces, Frank's got. I don't know what it is. It, it's it just it, it, I don't know what it is, man. And I don't know what what Frank. What's wrong with Frank Stable? But his cards is just like when when he tries to sell me some of the middleweights he's got, like Tommy Langford and Jamie Cox. I'm just like Frank, I mean, please. <laughs> uh. Carl Palmer, lots of white people in the UK actually support ethnic minority fighters or sportsmen in general. Yes, yeah, more than America do, I think. Well, you see, when you've got guys like Tyson and Ali, then they'll blow that argument away. It, you, you have to be an exceptional black athlete in America to capture the public's attention. You have to be an exception. But out here, we've had guys like Bruno, and it, massive, but big, big, big. And he wasn't that good compared to the American heavyweights that used to beat him up on a regular basis and the ones that preceded him. Yep, Max Ryder agrees with Carlton. Bruno was a case in point. Yep, 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 yep. Simo A, Bellew was a circus act. Overweight, punch drunk, trying to stop a one-legged fighter. Car crash TV. Um... I, don't know, I think it's a bit hard on Billy. I think it's a bit hard. I think that's. A, I think it's a bit hard. Um, he was there at the right time. He was trying to secure his kid's future, like he said. Um, it's um. You you actually have to give him more credit than what you're giving him, and the reason why is because I, I keep saying matchmaking is very important. If you don't have good matchmaking in your team or your roster. Forget about boxing. Forget about it. Unless, listen, you have to be so physically talented to overcome matchmaking. <laughs> that's, that's the thing. That they knew what David was going through. That's why they called him out at that stage of it. You think they're going to fight Dillian White? Dillian White wants to fight. They're not going to fight Dillian. Why? Because Dillian has got good legs right now. His legs are good. And he's a natural heavy. And he's younger than David Hay. And Dillian is at that uni Loughborough University all the time now, working out and training. He's not at the beach in Miami or wherever Hay was. Right? Dillian's working on his, on, on, on his shit. So they're not going to cook. Dillian's not going to get the fight. He might, because not, not unless there's a lot of money 
on the table. And Dillian and Tony Bellew doesn't do them kind of numbers. I mean, Dillian was saying, yeah, we can fight. It'll be pay-per-view. No, it won't be, Dillian. No, it won't be. It won't be. That's, that's not pay-per-view. Bellew and Dillian White is not pay-per-view. Not even in the UK. It's, 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 they, they did their homework, man. They did their homework and they got it right. You give credit to Team Bellew. Carl Palmer, I think you have to be a certain kind of ethnic to get mass support, though. Uh, well, tell us, <laughs> elaborate and Carl, enlighten us on what that is. I mean, I'm interested to see you break that down. Simo A, a fighter should be responsible themselves for promoting themselves. Can't argue with that. Can't argue with that, to be honest, fellas. You know, what he said there, you might think, oh, well, it's not good what they did to Ring and there, or this guy here, or that guy there. But he's actually correct. It's actually, he's, he is actually correct. You're bringing a business to the table. Now, if you want other people to run your business, they're going to try and extort big chunks out of it. So it's up to you to propel that business to the forefront so it's fruitful, it's viable, and it makes profit. He's, he's actually right. He's actually right. Next writer, he says, sadly, I think you are right as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Simo A, what if Roy retired after Ruiz? Well, his reputation... Well, he would, he would have been if he did. He would have never been knocked out so many times as he was. Yeah, yeah. And if he, if only he had the foresight to do so, he did. He, like I done a video yesterday about David Hay saying he's re retiring in 2010 because he saw what happened to Ray Jones. But, you know, he just didn't have the foresight to do so. He won the heavyweight title. He could have retired nicely then. Nicely. But you, you, you have to... You've got to dig into the archives with Roy Jones. When they had that super middleweight video, it's still online now. It's Roy Jones, Richie Woodhull, Chris Eubank, Steve Collins, I don't think Nigel Bennett, yeah. And... Um, I, think I could have missed someone, I don't know. And Johnny Nelson's hosting it. He said, man, I wanted to do what Floyd did. I wanted to do what Floyd did, man. I wanted to, you know, go unbeaten and get out of the game. But when he lost to Monto Griffin and got disqualified, that ended any hopes of doing that. That's why he moved up to heavyweight, because he wanted to do something really remarkable to leave his imprint on the game. And... He put a blueprint in his head. He had to do it like what Bob Simmons did. He wanted to do exactly what Bob did, and that's go to heavyweight and then come back down to win the, win the light heavy title. Yeah? After Bob uh, won the heavyweight title and lost it, they made the, the light heavyweight division quite soon after, and I think he beat a guy named Gardner. Is it George Gardner? Roy wanted to come down to light heavy and beat Tarver, and then ride out. But, you know, Tava worked him over. I think, what, 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 was, the, what was it, a draw? No, no, I think Roy got a majority decision. And he, he didn't win the fight. Tava won the fight. Tava won the fight. And then he got knocked out in the rematch. It's just, it's just crazy. Um. Simo A, correcting me. No, I, I apologize for that. Carl Yafai from Yemen. <laughs> Come on, Beats. He, he's not in the yeah, I, I apologize. See, that was in there. But um, yeah, that, 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 that was me being ge geographically in there. That's fair enough. I accept that. Um, Beats, what if Marvin Hagler never retired early? He would have got his ass beaten up. That's what, <laughs> that's what happened. Because, you mean, at, at that stage there, Martin was just slugging it out. And he was getting like, um, Mugabe bruised him up. Pretty badly. Hearns cut him pretty badly. Um, he got out at the right time. Marvin Hagler got out at the right time. Yeah? He was still in his early 30s, I believe. 
but there was nothing more for Mar Marvin to prove. There was nothing more for, for Marvin to prove. If he had carried on and had to fight a Michael Nunn or a Callum Bay or Mike McCallum, <laughs> I'm, I'm the dude's biggest fan, but it wouldn't have been a great look for him. Don't don't issues asking that question. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what what I'm saying, Simon, hey, yeah, okay, I, I I I was geographically incorrect, no doubt. What I'm saying is there isn't too many guys from the Yemen representing boxing like that in the country, but you know we have a champion from the Yemen like Nassim Hamid, you know. He's from the from Yemen as well. The bad guy. What if Amir Khan didn't get caught in Skype? Get caught doing what? Saint Cruz. What if Tyson Fury gets his head together? If he gets his head together, he has a chance of being one of the you know the, the better heavyweights in recent history and maybe history altogether. He has a chance, but he has to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he does have a shot at it. He does have a shot. But it, it's hard to put down drugs, man. It's hard to, like, like uh, it's hard to quit taking drugs. It's hard to quit your vices. It's hard to quit your vices and get structure and have a functional, fruitful, exceptional life. It's very hard. It's very hard to do it. It's very hard. Some people quit their vice, like a drug, for instance. But... Replacing that high can be a perpetual struggle that <laughs> you never come to terms with. You know? Max Rider won. What if Povetkin didn't take VADA testing? Um, he'd be a C level heavyweight, Max. That that's what it, that's what it is. If he wasn't on what he was taking, he'd be a C level. I mean, he'd get, be getting, he'd be European level, yeah? He'd be a European level heavyweight who will try and win titles and get starched out every time he stepped in or stepped up, yeah? With his 75-inch reach. He'd just be getting battered and beaten up. That's what would happen to Bebeke if he didn't take the, the, the Oh, you're saying if he didn't take it. I, I See, I'm reading your question wrong. I'm reading it like if he didn't take juice. If Bebeke didn't take Vada testing, who knows? He might be a, a serious contender or champion right now. Yeah, he might be. He might well be. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Aaron Oniak. What if Bob Satterfield, Sonny Liston, Cleveland Williams had fought Ron Lyle or even Ernie Shavers in all their primes? Oof. Man, you've got a lot of matchups there. Break it down to one matchup at a time to read out. Like, um, then, then it'd be easy to to break down. Like, what do you want to see? Bob Satterfield versus Lyle or versus Shavers? Sat Satterfield was a great puncher. Was a great puncher. Modern broadcast. I think the Furies are trolling everyone with these pictures. What pictures are they? One two two four five two nine. When I was growing up, boxing was huge here in the USA. I appreciate the UK's love for boxing. Andre Ward had to go to the UK to get love. He should also get that at home. Yeah, 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 yeah. Carl Palmer, Frank's cards are as dry as F U C K. Yeah, they are, man. It's just dry. Like because all right, because you love boxing, you'll watch it. But it's like, oh god, man. And um, he, his cards made me really appreciate the PBC, where I know, I'm, okay, I watch Erickson Lubin, maybe one more fight, and then, then, then Danny Garcia and Thurman are going to be throwing it down. I'm not waiting all year. <laughs> made me appreciate that. Because when I have to watch their, you know, their lightweight, they're, they're lightweight guy from Berry fighting the eight round or for the British. They're like, oh, long off, Frank, man. Jesus Christ. <laughs> the bad guy. What if George Foreman got a rematch with Ali? 
Um, if Ali gave Foreman a rematch, Foreman gets beat faster, says Next Rider. I think Nex is probably right. I think Nex is probably right. Ali just too clever. Just probably just too clever for George. Like um, maybe George would um, not repeatedly just um, let the rope a dope, give him the old okey doke. Maybe he'd try to um, get around that. Yeah, it'd be interesting though. It'd be very interesting. Simo A. What if the ref stopped Ben and McClellan in the first round? Well, there would have been a it would have been a big controversy for a start. A massive controversy, man. It would have had to go to a rematch, I guess. It could have been. It could have been stopped early. It could have been stopped early. Is that my fault? What's up to the One second, guys. Tony Bell, you fighting Wilder. <laughs> That's absolutely funny. That's no. No. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. It's just it's something that came out of his mouth. No one's taking it serious. And um I know I mean, look, there's people probably out there saying Bell you can beat Wilder. Trust me. <laughs> I'd love to see it happen, though. A little while to come over here. <laughs> Carl Farmer. Let's say Floyd was British. He wouldn't get the same support like AJ does. Um, If Floyd was British... He probably like um would he have the same I don't know I don't know I don't I don't know I don't know <laughs> Carl Bowman is my brown one big brother <laughs> Next rider one what if Miley and Army had good hands Ah oh. Hmm. You know what I had to mean? Like, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. He definitely would have had a better career. Definitely would have. I think he, um, fights like Hat the Hatton fight would have been, and the Khan fight would have been different. Not, not maybe the result would have changed. They would have definitely been more competitive. Don't ish. What if Tommy Hearns had a chin? Tommy had a better chin. He would have beat Ray Leonard for a start. He would have beat Ray. He would have beat Iron Barkley. Yeah, 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 yeah. But Tommy did well for somebody who didn't have the greatest chin. He, is, he had a great career. Ryan Goodwin, apparently Fury is back in May, he said today, but you never know with Fury laughing out loud. Mm. Okay, okay. Okay. 
Simo A, Fury back May the 13th. Really? Delboy, what if Meldrick Taylor reached the final bell against Chavez? Well, Chavez was clawing back some of the late rounds, but you'd have to imagine that Meldrick done enough to secure the victory. You'd have to imagine that. The bad guy. What if Ali retired after the rumble in the jungle? He wouldn't have got the thriller in the Manila, man, and he wouldn't have won the title three times. Um, but at the same time, you know, it would have been just a beautiful time for him to get out. It would have just been that that would have been ideal timing. It would have been ideal timing for him. Del Boy 94. What if Salvador Sanchez didn't have his career and life cut short? Nice one. Nice one, Del Boy. That's a, that's 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 a, that's an excellent one. That's an excellent one. Yeah, we, we, we missed a lot, uh, a lot on that guy there. Very talented guy. Well, um, what, what fights were like, um, maybe McGuigan? So, that would have been a big fight at the time, a really big fight. Oh, lo loads more stuff, loads more stuff. Damn the man, there would have been no thriller in Manila. That's right. Simo A, what if... David Price fought Mike Tyson in his prime. <laughs> Don't wait. I was waiting for a David Price one. <laughs> the bad guy. True. He loved the Thriller of Manila. Yeah, the Thriller of Manila, man. Like, you know, you know what I mean? Uh, that, that's, that, that's like boxing icarve, uh, archives that shit right there. Ahmed Hersey. If Floyd was a Brit, he wouldn't be Floyd. Let's not act like him. Being from Michigan didn't determine how good he was. Huh? I'm a Brit. What if Lennox kept his hands up against McCall and Hassim Ratman? He would have been undefeated. <laughs> he would have been undefeated, I guess. I mean, the only other controversial, well, the Ray Mercer one, he would have been undefeated. What if Lennox rematch Vitali? What, what what if Vitali didn't get cut that barely? <laughs> because the first fight was on the two week notice, resembled a sparring war, no tactics, says BC. Carlton Palmer says Lennox would have knocked him out. <laughs> Mike's one on four. Sanchez was supposed to fight one Laporte next. And that would have been a good fight too. See, McGuigan fought Laporte and them guys in Sanchez's absence. Yeah. Info minds getting knocked out is a little different than rupture in your Achilles. Bellew didn't cause it. Um, you're saying Bellew didn't, but he did actually cause it. Because if Ben, if, if, um, Hay was just walking about, living his life as normal. He could have, he could probably go years with that strain without it actually rupturing. But when you're doing an aggressive activity like boxing, where you got to launch off the back foot, you got because that's what happened, right? He moved back from an attack, and. He was actually bouncing on his on his feet. He was bouncing. He was back, just like he was against Ruiz, but he was heavier. So when he went back on his um, it was his right foot. On his right foot, you saw the foot. It kind of buckled a little, and you I mean you, you saw where it happened. So you can say Benny, Benny did cause it because it we like um. If, if Benny was a soft touch, Hay hey, would have knocked him out in one round and then the Achilles problem would have manifested. But because, like, at the time, he was struggling to get in range and he was struggling with his footwork. So Benny did cause it. He did cause it. He just, just on the strength of Hay being in there with a heavyweight who was, he was giving him trouble with the movement. 
with his movement. He wasn't, he was he, like, hey, his timing looked off. He was on the front foot, which he's not used to doing. He did cause it to a degree. And a few other factors, but that's just life. There's always other mitigating circumstances rather than just the obvious narrative. That's just, that's just how that is. That's just how that is. He did cause it. <clears throat> if he was just going to um, Morrison's <laughs> to pick up <laughs> a few groceries, he probably wouldn't have ruptured his Achilles, mate. You know what I'm saying? One, two, two, four, five, two, nine. What if Holyfield didn't fight Tyson? Would he still be considered an ATG? Good question. Good question. Good question. I think he would. He had a free fight series of Riddick Bow. He only won one of them, but nevertheless, it's there. Um, he beat Buster Douglas. He was the undisputed heavyweight champion. Let's remember that. And he was the undisputed cruiserweight champion. I think he would be without the Tyson fights. Yeah, I think he would. I think he would. Carl Palmer, if David Price was good, Placey? Yeah, well. What if what I, I've got one? What if David Price had fought Tyson Fury when they were supposed to fight for the British title years back? What would have happened then? Saint Cruising. What if Liston fought Frazier? Who wins? I've got this. I've got, got something, but a lot of people say Frazier. Delboy. What if Tyson fought Foreman in nineteen ninety? I'd have to go for the Tyson. I'd go for Tyson. I'd go for Tyson. Mets Rider 1. Sonny was a beast. Yes, indeed. Simo A. What if Harold Graham never fought Jackson? Would he have beaten the rest? Well, he couldn't beat Sumbu Kalambay, so no, he wouldn't have done. Sumbu beating fair and square. It, it, was, it was tight, but you have to imagine that um, Michael Nunn was very awkward. It would have gave Er Harold like in Britain there was people couldn't get near Harold Graham. But Michael Nunn, Sumbu Callum Bay. I mean, remember Mike McCallum beat him as well. Mike McCallum beat him too. So there you go. Lee M. Bo Lewis back in the 90s. I think Lewis would have beat him personally. Delboy, what if Eubank fought the U.S. middleweight and super middleweights, the top U.S. middleweight and super middleweights? Oof. Maybe he would have stepped his game up. Maybe. 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 Info minds, I see what you're saying, maybe to a degree, but there were other variables in play. Next rider one, if Frank Maloney turned out to be a female... <laughs> Oh dear, freaking Frank, uh, transgender madness. What if Oscar never fought Floyd? Would Floyd be a star? No, he wouldn't. No, he wouldn't. That propelled him to the next level. There's no other fight out there that could have done that, not unless he took on Bernard Hopkins or something like that, which he wasn't going to win. Does Wilder remind anyone of Michael Grant? So he informed my lines. Not me, not me. <laughs> he might remind you of him, but not me. The bad guy. What if Michael Watson didn't get a brain injury? Well, he would have beat Eubank. He was too, he was too far ahead on the card. He was too far ahead on the card. And who knows, man? He would have got another. Um, he would have had a belt. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? But it just um, it just went. That fight turned so rapidly and so dramatically, man. At White Lane, it, 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 I, I I still when I think about watching that fight, fight with my brethren, boy, that was just crazy. That's just crazy. Yo, boy, what if Oscar never tried that yayo for the first time? <laughs> His company might might be. Standing up right, right now. That's what. Um, Dan the man. What if Joe Calzaghe moved up to light heavyweight and went to America earlier? 
think he would have, I, I think there's a good chance he could have lost. I think there's a good chance he could have lost in America, you know. Info Mines laughing out loud. Del Boy, Dan the Man laughing out loud. Del Boy, <laughs> yeah, yo. Oh boy. Simo A, what if all the great Cubans turn pro? Would they dominate? Oof. Well, the landscape would look different in pro boxing. Let's just say that. It would look totally different. Mike's 104, what if the mafia didn't control boxing? Um, a lot of them black murderers, row fighters might have got title shots, man. The Lloyd Marshalls, the Charlie Burleys, the Elmer Rays, Coco Kids, Booker, Burt Littell, who lost a split decision to um, Jake LaMutta. They might have got title shots, man. They might have got genuine title shots. And, and not just uh, black fighters, a lot of other fighters who couldn't, who couldn't get, get a fair shot. Carlton Palmer, if Frotch versus Taylor finished 30 seconds early. Well, I had Taylor way ahead. So you'd have to imagine that Taylor would have won. Info Minds, what if Joe Calzani fought Carl Frotch in the ring, not in the cobbles? Um... I, 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 I used to think Frotch had a chance, but I'd have to go for Calzani, man. I'd have to go for Calzani. No, boy. What if I, I'd be a boy, she never went crazy? Oh. He, I, I believe he could have been a dominant champion. I, do, I actually do believe he could have been a dominant champion. Dan the man, he picks Joe. Info minds, he agrees. Yeah, I've got, I've got Joe. I've got Joe. I've got Joe. I've got Joe. Kazakh would have to knock Joe out. Like, he, he wouldn't be able to cope with that. The versatility and the hand speed. And... The cardiovascular was sick, man. Like, Joe threw an incredible amount of punches, man. An incredible amount. Mike 104, what if the film quality was better in the 1900s or if we had YouTube back then? I wanted to see more Ray Robinson. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, what if we had film footage of... Um, Harry Graham and them guys and more film footage like we do now. Or Ray Robinson when he was a welterweight. Yeah? <laughs> Carlton Farmer says Joe would have won. Dan the man, what if Edwin Bolero never killed his wife? Mm. boy, if Vladimir had Batali's chin. Oof. Simo A, Bolero would have Love to see him versus Pacquiao. Wow, that would have been a great, that would have been one of the great low way fights of our era. I would have loved to have seen that. I would have loved to see Valero and Brona at lightweight. That would have been beautiful. That would have been beautiful, man. The bad guy, Del Boy. A lot of heavyweights would trouble if Vladimir had Vitali's chin. Yeah, it would be, be a little scary, wouldn't it? It would be a little scary, man. Carlton Palmer, if AJ had an iron chin, has an iron chin. Uh, if he has an iron chin, Vladimir's done. <laughs> Info minds, do you think boxers took dives against Rocky Marciano due to alleged mafia connection? <sighs> That's a good one, man. A good one, man, but I'm going to plead the fifth. Rock's, got, Rock's still got supporters up to now. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know, man. 
He had one dodgy decision against Roland Lestaza. And then he knocked uh, Lestaza out in a rematch. Yeah? Man, I'm all ifed out, man. I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. You know, I really enjoyed this bid. It was excellent. And maybe we'll have to do this one again, do a part two. We'll have to do a part two. If for mine, <laughs> laughing my ass off because I, I, I'm pleading the fifth on that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not going to throw rugby under the bus, man. Bill Boy says, what if Mauricio Herrera got the decision versus Danny Garcia? Well, it would have been the correct decision. That's what it would have been. It would have been the correct decision. I mean, I, 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 that, that, that fight pissed me off, man. I, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Because I remember watching it with Chris Caban. I was thinking, man, Danny's going to piece this guy up. He's going to piece him up. And then, as the fight was progressing, I went, Chris, and you're in big ass, deep voice. Well, beats. I said, this guy's fucking dealing with Danny, isn't he? <laughs> he, was, he was dealing with Danny. Herrera was dealing with Danny. Dealing with it. He was dealing with it, bro. Next rider one, he says, Rocky got a lot of favors. Put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> Delboy says, great scream. Thanks, Delboy. Carter Palmer says, good one, Beats. Yep. St. Cruz says, very fun chat. Enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. All right, guys. But we'll have to do a part two one day, man. We'll have to do a part two. Peace.